Hello friends, welcome to this week's landscape photography vlog. And I've been really excited to share this one because this might have been one of my best days as a landscape photographer. We're back on the dunes, but I promise you this one's a little bit different. Really hope you enjoy the video. How's it going everyone? Michael Shanebloom here. And uh, we're on the dunes today, but it's a special day today because it is very, very windy. And when you get wind blowing off the dunes, it just creates this incredible atmosphere to work with. Really nice soft light, even when the sun is fully hitting the dunes before sunset. So I think we're gonna go explore, see what we can find. And uh, we also got two photographers out here. We got, <laughs> we got TJ Thorne, <laughs> Alex Noriega. Why'd you push him? I didn't know he'd fall. He bullies me. he was stronger than that. He bullies me. <laughs> if you don't know these two, they're, uh, well, two of the best photographers in the world and two of my favorite photographers. You in science class? What are we, what are we dissecting? What chemicals are we playing with, TJ? Huh? We're playing with silica and iron. And as they float through the air, we're dealing with photons. Yeah. We also got some other friends with us. We got. Brent Matt and Josh, Mr. Josh Cripps. Y'all wrapped up, you good to go? <laughs> Looks like no yeah, sand's getting in your face, huh? Uh, no, I'm pretty comfy. See, I didn't have lunch. So really for me, this is, this is lunch, Ooh. you know? <laughs> so I'm actually pretty excited to get some sand in the face. So I think I, it's finally time to take out the camera. And as always, we got, the 100 to 400 lens attached to the camera. Just looking at this sea of dune waves in the distance and uh, it's pretty spectacular. Got Alex here shooting some cool compositions. What you got going on, Alex? Dunes, dunes! <laughs> it, it's incredible. It almost doesn't look real. Every few seconds, a different dune catches a bit of that wind and get the sand dusting across the top of it. Pretty amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna try out some different compositions, see how they work. So I'm doing ISO 400 F11 and 1 800th of a second, just to make sure everything is nice and sharp. Here's my first photograph, and that sand blowing across the tops of the dunes was beautiful to witness, but also the sand in the sky added this nice ethereal glow to the background. Once I was done shooting this single exposure, I decided to try a big horizontal panorama. Here's how it came out. So this photograph is four horizontal shots stitched together using Lightroom to create this wide perspective. It's funny because every single time I take these panoramic images, I'm never entirely sure how they're gonna come out. So it's always a bit of a surprise when the stitching is done and I get to finally see the full composition. All right. Well, I think I got a composition in that, that cluster of, of dunes out in the distance. There's something in there that I'll like quite a bit, but it's always good to keep on moving on the dunes, keep exploring. It's absolutely unreal watching the sand sweep across these dunes. It's certainly not the easiest thing to shoot because, you know, you can't really do long exposures and it's a little tough to focus on the, on the viewfinder with the wind. It's hard not to get distracted by that sand blowing over the crest of the dune. It's fun to just sort of stand there and watch the motion for a while. But after I was done being a little distracted, I decided to shoot a composition out in the distance. I thought 
this composition at 400 millimeters looked quite nice with that imposing dune towards the top of the image and then the different triangle shaped dunes that kind of lead up to it. I also like the double dusting of sand on both the middle dunes, the one on the left side and right side. And overall, I just felt like the colors, tones, and soft look to this photograph worked really well. Let's see, TJ right there on top of this dune. It is super windy where we're walking right now. Just trying to shield the mic from the wind. Whew. Hey dude. What you doing? Boom, so. TJ and I are gonna hike up another dune. Down a dune, up a dune, down a dune, up a dune. The last perspective was pretty good up on the other dune, but it's always better on the next dune over. You know, you just keep moving from dune to dune. Gotta go to the next dune, which is the better dune, <laughs> which is better than the last dune, which is the best of them all. Exactly. You pretty much go from dune to dune until the sun sets. And then once that sun dies, you realize maybe you should have been on the other dune. And then you rush back there to see if you can get the soft light. I think probably on that one. Big one? Yeah, I'm thinking get on top of that one. And sure enough, from that dune, I found a few perspectives that I really liked. Here's what I shot. So here's something a little bit different. I don't do a ton of vertical shots on the dunes, and I also don't do a ton of photography with people in there. But I felt like for this image, it worked really well for scale. I also like that this image tells a different story than the previous photographs. To me, this image is all about the people and why they're there. Now, of course, seeing their tripods and stuff, I know they're photographers and they're out there taking awesome pictures of the dunes, but my mind starts to wander and I start to think of different ideas of why these people are out there. Maybe we're in a different place or a different time period. Maybe these people are explorers. So for me, I really like the fantasy element of this photograph. Here's another one that really caught my eye, and I think it's the mix of three different elements. The first element being that rough texture that you see across the dunes. Those little ridges across the surfaces of the dunes made for just such a beautiful pattern. The second element, of course, being that dusting of sand across the top of the ridge. And then the third element, which I don't include a lot in these photographs, is actually those bushes out in the distance made for something a little bit different. Those brighter bushes back there, I felt like added a nice bit of texture and some interest into the background. The last few times I was out here, it was so peaceful. It was relaxing even. You just sit down on the top of the dune, put out your cam pull out your camera, shoot some peaceful compositions. This is anything but peaceful right now. We're trying another dune. We're gonna walk up another dune. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry, he found a composition. Uh, but uh, we're gonna walk up another dune, see if we can get another perspective and just a nice overview of the different patterns and shapes. I am finding some really cool stuff in here. Just finding a lot of cool patterns with the side light on this, on these dunes. Uh, it looks beautiful. So let me show you what this composition looks like or some of the compositions that I'm playing around with here. So I love this swirl right in here. This nice S curve of this dune. But I've also been playing around with some zoomed out shots. And some of these patterns in here just look so cool. You know, it's about taking this and simplifying it and 
trying to remove the distracting elements and well, the 100 to 400 lens is doing a great job of that. And what's nice is it's a little less windy on this dune right here, so I can kind of comfortably stand here and, and know that the audio sounds good and, and I can uh, do a little vlogging. shapes here really caught my eye and I spent quite a bit of time on this composition just trying to fine-tune the framing a bit. I did a few images that were a little bit more pulled out that looked at some of the other shapes in the background and the foreground and some that were even tighter that excluded more of the shapes. I felt like this right here was a perfect balance to show the shapes and still have a few extra elements in there to add interest to the photograph. The lighting all day on these dunes was beautiful to witness, but at this moment it was getting a lot softer, but also quite a bit more vivid than previously. I felt like it worked really well for this photograph. swoosh pattern I was focused on before and definitely one of the most beautiful S curves I've ever seen across the dunes. I mean it's such a clean curve it almost doesn't look real but then again a lot of this dune photography doesn't look like reality and I think that's why I enjoy it so much. This photograph again just has such a nice contrast of warm highlights and cool shadows, organic curvy shapes, and of course having a bit of dusting across the tops of the dunes was definitely a nice tree as well. that sun setting in the distance over the mountains. After shooting this image, TJ and I realized we wanted the same shot from the same position, so we made a little compromise. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> sir, sir, can I get in here and get a shot real quick? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> sir, I'd like to stand there and shoot as well. Can Do you mind? <laughs> we got that sun setting right above the mountain and everything has gotten super soft. This might be some of the most beautiful light I've ever seen on these dunes. This is really, really pretty. I shot a composition out there in the distance with some zigzaggy patterns and there's a group of people standing on top of the dune which could make for a, a nice shot. And we got this swirl down here, which is nice and soft and catching all this sand blowing. I mean, you, you can't ask for much better than this. And here's the last images that I captured before the sun dipped behind the mountain. So as you can see here, I tried two different versions of this composition. The first version, including the dune out there in the distance and the glowy light above the edges of the dunes, and then the second composition completely removing the tops of the dunes to create a little bit more minimalism and simplicity to the shot. I like both of these images for different reasons, but now I'd like to hear from you. Which one of these compositions do you enjoy more? Do you like this first image that shows a bit more of the sky and gives you a little bit more context? Or do you like this more minimalistic shot that completely removes the top of the dune? Please let me know in the comments. Here's one more image of those figures out there in the distance, and I may like this one a little bit more than the previous vertical shot. And I'm sure you can guess why. It's that dusting of sand across the two diagonal dunes. And I felt like these three dune ridges towards the bottom of the image gave this perfect balance. These three triangle shapes that mimic each other, and then the dusting of sand is almost a mirror image from the bottom dune towards the middle of the photograph. So even though the sun has dipped behind the horizon out there, well, not behind the horizon, but behind this mountain ridge, you still get this, I mean, really beautiful warm glow across the dunes and everything's a little bit softer than it was before, which I didn't think it could get any softer because even while the sun was 
was up, it was still pretty soft. I think I got some good stuff so far, but I'm still trying to shoot some of these ridges out there in the distance. And I'm gonna wait until the light gets, oof, it just got really windy. <laughs> I'm gonna wait until the light gets a little bit lower, that ambient light, and see if even more reflected light comes out on these dunes and, and kind of gives the dunes a bit of a pink glow. The only problem is, when it's windy like this, it's tough to do long exposures. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna be able to shoot those you know, reflected light twilight shots uh, like I have in past videos. We're really gonna have to wait and see what happens. So Josh and I, and TJ and Alex, we all have an app called Gaia, Gaia GPS. And uh, it's an offline map system that allows you to track your routes. And when you're in a place like this and you wanna pinpoint a certain dune that you've been to and you say, okay, I wanna go back to that dune and maybe you know, shoot it under different light or especially it helps for sunrise because it's so dark during sunrise, it's, <laughs> it's hard to get a composition to, at sunrise, especially you know, with the lack of, of food and caffeine. But, uh, well, and the funny thing is, a lot of people don't realize that the dunes don't change. You know, the sand blows around, but the dune field stays essentially just like this. So this dune, probably through our lifetime, will be here. Maybe it moves a little bit, but this dune will be here, and that dune, and that dune, and that dune. They're all in the same place. Uh, so, yeah, eventually you get to know it. Kind of overwhelming at first, but as you get in here, you recognize Oh, that's old Pointy McGee over there. That's <laughs> Mount McSand Hill. If you are one of those people who is having a little trouble with compositions and you're, and you're having trouble finding places and, or refinding places, especially in a place like Death Valley National Park, um, yeah, check out Gaia GPS and uh, start mapping the routes that you take out to places. And then you can always you know, go back to those places and check those pinpoints and get them under different conditions. One of the things I really love about shooting the dunes is how you're always left wanting a little bit more. I love the quality of light right before the sun drops behind the mountains. And everything just looks so good in that moment. You're just chasing, trying to find that perfect composition that catches that amazing light. And you think you got it, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. And then it's gone, just like that. You think, well, I gotta wait till the next uh, windy, sunny day to come back out here and try it again. Josh and I wandered around for a while just looking for different compositions under the reflected light. I didn't see a ton that really caught my eye, but I did manage to stumble upon one composition I thought was really nice. Here it is. Luckily, the further after sunset, the more that wind died down and allowed us to take a few images and I had to do quite a long exposure for this photograph. I thought this was a nice clean dune and I loved that vivid lighting across the right side of the dune and the nice swooshing patterns across the image. It's not my favorite from the shoot, but it was a great way to cap off an incredible evening. So what can I really say about this outing? Not only was it one of the most dramatic days I've ever had on the dunes, action-packed experience captured some of my favorite images that I've ever shot at the dunes, and I got to spend it with a lot of photographers who I've been friends with for 10 plus years, people I look up to, admire, and respect, and even met a few new photographers along the way. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.